My name's Joko, and this is Stay With Me. The internet's art world has really exploded over the years. Professionals, students, hobbyists, streamers, that guy Aaron Carter stole from, you can't get away from these people. Which is great for me personally because my life's goal is to stalk every single one of them on social media. I got Jenny Fryson on Instagram, Ross O'Donovan on Twitch, and even Caravaggio's Twitter. But today is one artist in particular that I want to take some time to appreciate. This is Artist Spotlight. Okay, so listen, Grace Salute, aka Nargyle, she's the real deal. She's an artist, she's an animator. She rides a motorcycle into work, and her job, making cartoons. She's worked for Marvel, Sony, Nickelodeon, and DreamWorks. But I'm not just here to talk about how she's popping willies into the studio parking lot. I've been following her work for years, and she continues to be one of my absolute favorite artists out there. Not just because of her skill, which she has plenty of, but also because how her work has been a continuous source of inspiration to me, and I'm sure many others. If you're like me, the first thing you'll probably notice is how good she is at action shots. I remember having this picture of Toph as my background for about a year because I was so impressed by how intense it was. This piece of fan art unironically changed my life because I wanted so badly to know how it was possible to draw something as cool as that, that I turned into an artist to figure it out. She knows how to make a strong pose for sure. But what really makes her stand out is the fluidity of her art style. She builds characters up with a few basic shapes, and then with those same shapes she pours a huge amount of energy into them. Collages like this of her OC Do Not Steal Anna are some of my favorite things to look at in her galleries. I would stare at these trying to get a sense of her process and how she posed her characters. Even though I didn't learn what a line of action was until two years after I opened my first sketchbook. In case you aren't aware, just like I was, the line of action goes through the main action of a pose. It goes through the spine, usually, and then out through one or two of the limbs. A pose formed around a line of action gives it a strong sense of direction and momentum. The smooth shapes and contour lines of her figures actually serve to reinforce the overall pose. Nargyle's art style is all about lines of action. So if you want to do like she do, you just gotta draw a line, and then draw a few other lines. And that's basically it. I can't imagine anyone needing more instruction than that. But just in case, I took a deep dive into Nargyle's Tumblr and came back up with some hot tips. Cypherclock Deactivated 20180101 asked, Have you ever thought of making an art tutorial? Nargyle answered, Sometimes I do, but then I remember my method of drawing 99% involves keep drawing until it looks right, slash looks really cool, slash I like it. Not sure how much that contributes to what folks already know. That's my Nargyle impression. I've never heard what she sounds like, but I imagine that that was spot on. Alright, that's a good start, but let's move on. Grace Alot asked, Do you have any tips for drawing a character with energy? All of your drawings are so full of energy. Nargyle answered, Love. Alright, now we're getting to the real nitty gritty, really peeling back the layers here. Seinfeld Fucko asked, your eye has so much movement and a strong dynamic feel. What exercises slash references slash artists do you suggest to create more movement in my artwork? Thank you. I strongly suggest looking at animation frames from action anime slash cartoons, i.e. Gynex slash Trigger. There's a lot of good utilization of exaggerated proportions and lines to create that extra oomph and motion. Also, practice, like, a lot. The more I drew, the more fearless I became in pushing the boundaries of what I was accustomed to. Also, I operate under the assumption that every pose, curve, and line of action could be pushed so much more. Exaggeration is key here, friend. That pretty much breaks it all down right there. Her willingness and ability to push the boundaries of anatomy resulted in the fluidity and motion that her art style is known for, which in itself comes from studying techniques using animation, which is also why her art can sometimes look just like frames taken right out of a cartoon. And now, it's her job to put frames back into cartoons. It's all one big circle. Now if you're like me, and you really want to practice to get good like Nargyle, I highly suggest doing some just drawings. It takes like 10 minutes, just gotta do a few every day. That's why I use quickposes.com 
With its vast collection of photos and user-friendly interface, Quick Poses is the place to be if you're an artist. Alright. Glow Dark Art asked, Just found your blog and I'm loving your art style. You're able to portray so much fluid movement and expression in the people you draw and I love how you manipulate the anatomy of the characters you draw to better reflect their personalities. I look forward to seeing your future works, colon, close parentheses. That's such a thoughtful compliment. Thank you. Glad you like, colon, close parentheses. Mr. and or Mrs. Glowdark took the words right out of my mouth, and more importantly wrote a good bit of the script for me. You might notice that Narga has a lot of OC do not steals. Even though she doesn't have a cartoon series of her own, yet, they make an impression through their visual design and the sheer expressiveness of her art. And that's kind of one of the most fun parts of scrolling through her galleries. You get a sense of their personalities and histories just because of how upfront these character traits are. I can really imagine having seen them in a cartoon that came on Saturday nights leading into Samurai Jack or Avatar. A good lineup, by the way. And now, because I'm a real good sport, I'm putting my head on the chopping block. This is the first drawing on the first page of my first sketchbook. And of course, it's an OC. I don't remember what her name was, but what I can tell you is I wasn't just ripping off Nargyle. I was ripping off a bunch of other stuff too. The basic concept was that she was some kind of courier on a Vespa with a baseball bat and a magical bag of holding. Honestly, the idea still holds up, I think. Artists usually cringe looking at their old drawings, but I still like this book. I remember how much fun I was having, how proud I was. I don't see any reason I should stop being proud of it just because I've gotten better since then. Artists or anyone in a creative field or probably any field at all are caught in a race between leveling up their skill and leveling up their critical eye. At different times, you wind up being better at one than the other. On the one hand, if your art making is better than your art looking, you're having a good time. You're feeling confident when you draw, you're happy with what you finish. The downside to that is uh, staying that way for too long can wind up stunning your growth. If you can't recognize your mistakes, you're just going to keep making them. On the other hand, if your ability to criticize yourself gets too strong, then yeah, you know where to improve, but it can feel pretty miserable in the meantime. So caught in the crossfire of all this is all your old art, which is no longer up to your current standard. So you end up hating it for all of these glaring flaws that you never realized were there before. And then it kind of becomes this two pronged thing where it's not just that it's not good. It's that we're the ones who made those mistakes and we're the ones who didn't even know those were mistakes back then. It's like looking at a picture of yourself in kindergarten eating a crayon. And that's not really fair. It's not fair to your current self. It's not fair to the idiot eating crayons. And it's not fair to those OCs who didn't ask to be born. So now I try to approach this cycle of self-improvement a little more optimistically. So I try not only to just recognize the flaws, I try to see the good things that maybe I forgot about and see maybe I can reapply to my current art or just enjoy it in its imperfection. Plus, I'm well aware by now that even my recent work isn't going to be perfect either. At the same time, I know that I am moving my art in the direction that I want it to go. And if nothing else, I know that I can always do better next time. And that's really the point. I'm always trying to do better.
little chest hurt in the flesh and my flesh burning I'm stressed but I don't stress it unless it affects person I care about the other ones smoking with a punctured lung walking to the classroom and zoning to the functions done college student but my goals ain't studious daydreaming back in the class I bang gluteus payroll on faculty staff is dang foolishness it's hard to make a day down in Sprite and take a break party harder than Jeff Hardy I'm hardly more than best bargains of breast parting bitch I think I'm Moses eyes rolling back start to trip on second dosage listen to the lyrics you could learn a lesson focus trill to the tune fresh to death death is bogus you will get consumed pop pills to the moon false teeth fill the gaps with the fool's gold build my tombstone out of moonstone it's free cinema cat guts get caressed by the horse hair my body's on earth but my head is in north fair i walk home but i just get ignored there i walk home but i just get ignored there and you can ride to it ride to it or you can slide through it slide through it or we could die to it die to it that's pretty much the show i want to thank you all for staying with me till the title drop the first youtube video is a lot like the first sketchbook it's a little awkward at first you might try imitating a few of your favorites uh maybe follow a few tutorials by the end you're just sort of digging ground black and then you show it to a bunch of people before you realize how bad it is and then you just move on to the next one playing me out at the end there was pork by kill bill the rapper you can find him and his partner in crime, Rav, on Spotify and on their YouTube channel, Chibi Chubby. I first heard that song early last year, which led me to his 2015 album, Ramona. Easily one of the best things I heard all last year. And I just want to give one final shout out to Grace, who really is a genuine inspiration to me. I'm sure lots of other people have that one or two artists who sort of gave him that first spark. It's all really their fault at the end of the day. So, talk about that in the comment section. I put some links in the description that'll lead you to more of Nargal's pretty pictures. And while you're down there, if you could just go ahead and click the like button. If you really like the video, you can even click it twice. You can subscribe if you want. I'll talk more art, more artists, whatever's good. And that about wraps it up. All that's left is the sign off.